Hi, my name is Tyan Jaga, and welcome to our daily devotion, and this is the eighth day. We'll start off with the memory verse. It comes from Acts 17, verse 28, and it says, In him we live, move, and have our being. As some of your poets have said, we are his offspring. The things I have learned from this memory verse is, number one, we live. This means that we have life in God, and without God, we wouldn't be alive. We move. This means we move for God's purpose. And from one man, he made and created a whole nation to multiply and spread to the and in that they may inhabit the world we have our being in this case we have our identity and we have meaning we have our identity in god defining who we are my last point is we are his offspring we are god's offspring in that case it means we are his children who worship and glorify him. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you f for the precious gift that you have given us, the gift that lets us have our being and make all our movement, the gift of life. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Books of the Bible, James. So part of God's story is a book in the Bible called James, and it goes like this. The Bible is made up of all kinds of stories, poems, and letters, and it's all about pointing us to God. The Bible has two parts, the Old Testament and New Testament. James is in the New Testament, right after 1 Peter, but before Hebrews. James, who was also a brother of Jesus, wrote this letter to the early church the first group of people who followed Jesus in a city called Jerusalem. Even though it was written to the followers of Jesus a long time ago, James's letter can still help us today. When James wrote this letter, many followers of Jesus were experiencing hard things like being poor and hungry and also persecution. Persecution is when people are treated badly because of what they believe. But James encouraged them to love God and love their neighbors. That might have surprised some of the early Christians who felt they only needed to love the people who loved them back. James reminded them that following Jesus' example and showing their faith through love and grace to others was the only way to live a life devoted to God. How do we do that? This is how James put it. He said, but don't just listen to God's word, you must do what it says. For if you listen to the word and don't obey, it is like glancing at your face in a mirror and forgetting what you look like. This was different from the way most people lived who didn't follow Jesus. Most of them only listened to God's word. They didn't obey it. But James said that Jesus did both. And if they wanted to be like Jesus, their actions had to match their words. That meant treating others equally and not favoring wealthy people over the poor and oppressed. James said, hasn't God chosen the poor in this world to be rich in faith? Aren't they the ones who will inherit the kingdom he promised to those who love him? If you favor some people over others, you are committing sin. Sin is the opposite of obeying God's word. See, James knew following Jesus means to love one's neighbor as yourself. And loving our neighbor includes watching what we say to others. James said, for if we could control our tongues, we would be perfect and could also control ourselves in every other way. Loving our neighbor also means being humble. He said, humble yourselves before God, resist the devil and he will flee from you. That means if we want to resist evil, we have to trust in God's ways and treat others the way he wants us to. And James really understood this. He said, What good is it, brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith, but don't show it by your actions? Can that faith save anyone? 
Some may argue that some people have faith, others have good deeds. Just as the body is dead without breath, so also faith is dead without good works. Hmm. In other words, following Jesus is not all faith or all works, but both working together. And when our actions match our words, we can show our love for God and everyone around us. And that's a little bit about the book of James. So in case you missed it, here's the quick version. James wrote James. It's in the New Testament. James teaches us that following Jesus isn't always easy. Still, we can love others. We can treat people well. We can be humble like Jesus was. And we can make sure our actions match our words. And that's a part of God's story. 